Good evening, everyone. Time for another Bitcoin report. Now, here's the pennant that's forming up nicely. We pointed out in the last two videos. If you're curious as to why I'm doing all of these parts in the same day, is that it's difficult to keep all of this stuff in line. So I want to get this series completed here. You can see the strength in the rally. The pennant formation is one of the most predictive bull formations. I've shown that many, many times. Another one is forming up here. So we may get that break through a thousand tonight. A break through a thousand is going to be fairly decisive. You can see a break through a thousand is pretty much going to be the end of this small time short term bear market and a resumption of the bull market in Bitcoin. And we may be going to 6,000 if the rule that I pointed out earlier holds. So let's get back to the narrative. We're talking about this disruptive technology, cryptography, the presentation just recently by Jacob Applebaum about the technologies implemented by the Chinese and the NSA and we don't know how many others that are concentrating on the endpoint uh, the endpoint of the devices, whether it be routers, switches, or specifically the PCs involved in this cryptographic tunnel that runs over the internet, this disruptive technology that is as disruptive as Bitcoin. Cryptography is the basis of Bitcoin, but again, anonymity is not built into Bitcoin. Anonymity is built into this cryptographic tunnel. So let's get back to the narrative. We were looking into Cicada and why Cicada 3301 is, in my opinion, a recruitment tool. We don't know who is behind it. Is it anonymous? Is it the NSA? Is it the Chinese? We don't know. Whoever is behind it is very, very talented, very, very knowledgeable. And we're back at this beginning of part one, 2013. If you remember, there was the Cicada 3301 recruitment program that happened in 2012. The participants went dark. We don't know what happened uh, except for some feedback that we can't authenticate as to whether it's accurate or not. There's more in the second uh, implementation of Cicada in 2013. That's the one we're looking at. But if you remember, we were going over this pastebin warning that came out right before Cicada 2013 started. So let's get back to that paste bin warning. If you remember, this was an individual who said he was a member of the organization. So we're going to continue uh, on his story and his warning. I was recruited in the organization when I was an officer in the service of my country for many years. I was a career officer and showed great promise was quickly promoted, finally arrived at a high position, approached my superior, etc. He goes through his playing of backgammon and uh, all the games. Uh, he goes into the background. We covered that of the type of belief system that they're looking for, this type of existentialist, uh, uh, amoral, I'll call it, no absolute moral right and wrong. So they're looking for two types of things. They're looking for what we'll call adherence of a particular type of philosophy as well as being geniuses or near geniuses in many areas of uh, understanding and thought. Finally, after more than a year of being examined without knowing it, I was invited for the organization I accepted with gratitude. It was here. What I wanted from the beginning, a group of like-minded individuals, all incredibly talented and connected to work together for the common good, the good of mankind. It may take many years to learn the true nature of Cicada, though. Before going further, I have to explain some things about the organization with no particular order. Origin. Established initially, organized by a group of professional military officers, diplomats, and academics who were dissatisfied with the direction of the world. The organization is in no way linked to any military or the government of any country. However, they recruit often among high government officials to gain more power. Structure. They use multiple structures within one global structure. There's a decentralized cell structure. 
and then there's ranks. There's compartmentalizing within that structure and within the cells there's a strict military structure. The cell hierarchy is military. There are different cells dedicated to different areas, technology and research and foreign policy, etc. It's possible that the cells are found to disagree with other cells or even the objectives of the organization itself. Quote, if you cannot beat them, control them. Beliefs. Belief in the Highland ideas on the global brain. In fact, the idea of a global brain with humans and individual nuances arise on a regular basis. Uh, this is the idea that all the individuals on Earth can make up this global brain, which I think is an absolutely silly idea. But let's continue. Believe in absolute freedom, individual, and the information. Believe in the philosophy of the Jesuit that end justifies the means. Through this idea to justify their actions, do not always fall on their own belief systems and philosophies. Again, very, very dangerous belief system. Obviously, a belief system from someone who doesn't believe in God uh, that their actions are ultimately going to be judged. Other philosophy they use is what you resist persists by Jung and the Jesuit corollary create what you fear most. For example, if you're afraid of resistance and rebellion, then you send operators to create resistance and rebellion. This way you can direct the energy of the people, embrace it, let it dwindle, at the same time minimize the damage. So that's the idea of planned opposition. Uh, that was um, Lenin's quote, I believe, that uh, how do you control the opposition? We create it. They believe that there is no inherent meaning to anything, that all things are empty and meaningless, and that all things are always whole and perfect and complete. Uh, now, coming from, I will call myself, coming from a theistic perspective, some of this stuff just is, in my mind, absolutely contradictory, that you can say that everything is empty and meaningless and then make true statements. Of course, I don't understand how these people can be so into math but believe that everything is meaningless. It doesn't make any sense to me, but that's how these people believe. They believe that within each person there is a God, not big God in the sense of most religions. This is more like the Ubermensch in the writings of Nietzsche, and they see the global brain as another kind of God. Their mantra is, I am always enough. It's getting very close to Crowley, and we're going to see in the second test here of 2013 that actually they go into Crowley. They teach the followers to find death every day. It does not mean literal death. Instead, there's a double meaning. Know you're going to die, so nothing matters, and find death of the eye or the ego. That's sort of a Hinduistic belief. They teach five levels of view of the human. However, they eventually put five levels down to one thing. There's no soul distinct from the body. This is a feature of the left-hand path belief systems. I don't agree with that, but uh, I think there's a lot of left-hand path who believe in a lot of things like astral travel, etc. They teach that absolute morality does not exist. Of course, they teach there's no real reality, that all reality is dependent on the observer. Again, that, in my opinion, just a silly notion if you understand mathematics and the laws of mathematics. They teach... There is no salvation in life, for there is nothing from which we must be saved. That speaks for itself. I believed this for a long time. I thought many of these things already when I joined. Mostly I believed more when I learned more and more about Cicada teachings. Generally agree with Cicada ideas. And as I risen in the organization, I've learned more about the beliefs. Now I'm a father and a husband, and I have come to search for the one true God and his son. No, son is not capitalized. This is why I have no choice but to leave this group do not believe in him. I encourage, I encourage everyone to do the same. Worry not for your power here on earth, only for your rewards in heaven. I'm saved now from hell, but I ask you to do the same. Please read Romans 10.13 and call on the name of the Lord. Very interesting. So we have apparent conversion of this person. Uh, one thing that we don't have a mention of is any kind of oath. That would be very unusual because secret societies always have oaths. And another hint here is that there was no retribution for leaving. Apparently, we don't know. So the question is going to be, is this warning legit? Uh, another concern here is that the warning came out right before the next recruitment began, January 5th, 2013. So there's a number of ways you can take this warning. Maybe the warning is legit, maybe not. 
Maybe the warning is a marker to say go no further and if you disregard this marking or marker and go further then you've been warned so we don't know it could be either way. Anyway here is the message that began the next challenge 2013 Cicada 3301. Hello again our search for intelligent individuals now continues. The first clue is hidden within this image find it and it will lead you to the road to finding us. We look forward to meeting the few that will make it all the way through. Good luck, 3301. The image was processed by the st steganographic tool Outguess. This message was the result. A more analytic look re reveals the use of a book cipher. To decrypt the message, one needs to find the text was used for encrypting. A book whose study is forbidden, once dictated to a beast, to be read once and then destroyed or you shall have no peace. Now uh, people who are familiar with Crowley would immediately see Crowley there. Crowley was the beast and it's the book of the law. The poem introducing the secret message was a nudge towards the right text. After a bit of debate the text that was used to encrypt the book the cipher was discovered. The law. Liber al vel legis the book that was used to hide the message was Liber All the Legis by Aleister Crowley, also the Book of the Law. It is available online, can be found here. The first line points towards the sixth character, the first line in the first chapter, and H in this case. It was assumed that spaces weren't counted. Punctuation, however, influenced the character chosen for the plain text. During the decrypting, we found that dashes were vital to the process, so we kept them in the plain text. Using these rules, we encrypted the book cipher and came up with the decrypted message. And that's this Dropbox address. We agreed upon substituting the dashes with slashes. It came up with the hyperlink. The hyperlink directed to a Dropbox address with a file, 130 megabytes, ready for download. After downloading, the file was analyzed. Quick check for magic bytes. Header bytes revealed offered file was an ISO image. ISO image is a CD, DVD, the, it's not a data file that can be read on your computer. Uh, you can do things like mount, uh, have a virtual drive and, and mount it and then you can view it, but it's used for burning a DVD. The image, was, the image file was downloaded by multiple solvers and either burned to disk run on a computer open in a virtual drive. Looking into its contents we find three directories data, boot, and audio. When booting from the image a boot sequence appeared <laughs> pretty dangerous I wonder what machine they booted it on. A boot sequence appeared printing a sequence of numbers to the screen investigating the sequence revealed that the live image prints out all prime numbers up to 3301. There were temporary two second pauses at 1033 and 3301 where it stops at the latter and moves to the second stage. The next and last stage of the procedure is a screen that reads at 123 this number. You can see this palindromic nature of this number. It starts and it ends backwards. It has a 7 in the middle. The key is all around you. Good luck 3301. Further analysis of the live image turned up the routine responsible for the display of the prime numbers. It's a Linux shell script found here which luckily is human readable. It does not calculate prime numbers like some suggested but connected the printing command with the sleep command. In most cases the sleep time is 0.5 seconds. In the case of the primes 1033 and 3301 however the sleep time is 2 seconds which manifested the relevance of those two numbers. Also this clue said you not we differing from the last one in the choice of words. Also found in the image was this PGP signature which had been verified to be the official 3301 signature. It's possible to interrupt the boot sequence by pressing Control C. User TC is active and does not require a password. In the sudo file, no prompt, sudo ash to raise the root. Further inspection revealed nothing that is not listed in the wiki. The music. The folder audio contains an audio recording. The title of this recording was 761.mp3 and could be downloaded here. The ID3 tags show us the title, The Instar Emergence. And the artist 3301, the used instrument is a guitar with distorting effects on it. On the track, a reverse guitar is played and amplified throughout. The song has been deconstructed and checked for hidden reverse messages. As of yet, it's turned up nothing out of the ordinary. The song is 
in the key of D flat minor with a custom guitar tuning of D flat, A flat, D flat, G flat, A flat, D flat. If you're familiar with guitar, you know that uh, guitar is E A, uh, E A, what is it? <laughs> D G B E. And uh, people like Jimmy Page, for example, who was a devotee of Aleister Crowley, played many of his famous songs in an open tuning. You can listen to the song here. Key points about the track is the initial breath sound, believed to be the sound of many cicadas. Tempo changes beginning at approximately 135 and accelerating to 145 beats per minute, then slowing to 125 beats per minute. This has led some to believe that the song has been slowed down by 5%. A draft analysis shows the constant hum, etc. The original message had a slash N attached to the end of each line. This character sequence is used to indicate a new line in some programming languages. These were omitted due to the availability of proper formatting techniques. The subgroup who were assigned the task of analyzing the poem riddle above speculated that circumference might be a reference to limitations. I'm sorry I didn't read that. This is the poem, the instar emergence. Like the instar tunneling to the surface, we must shed our own circumference find the divinity within and emerge. The very Luciferian, uh, Illuminati type of idea there. Uh, very clear in my mind, making an analogy to the Earth, the instar emerging out, and uh, individuals the same way must emulate that to find the divinity within. Kind of strange from people who don't believe in any kind of divinity. The character sequence is used to indicate a new line in some programming languages. These were omitted. The subgroup were assigned the task of analyzing the poem riddle above. Have speculated that circumference might mean a reference to perceived limitations. Blah, 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 blah. It's also been pointed out that the song is 2 minutes, 47 seconds long, or 167 seconds, which is prime. It's also a reversal of the name of the file, 761 on MP3. 761 is also prime. The Twitter while people still search through the image to find more hints that may have been overlooked, somebody in IRC found a Twitter account, which got our attention to say the least. Multiple things were strange about that Twitter. If it's the overall style of Cicada, it was registered shortly after the first downloads of the live image, and it had no followers. It was later found to be referenced on the boot CD to at 123 in this palindromic prime number. The most striking thing about it was the message it tweeted. Each tweet consisted of an offset and 65 bytes of hex code. For example, the first message went like so. 3301 appears to have been used, have, appears to have used a bot in the tweets at five minute intervals, then on to four minute intervals, where it seemingly random up to 2204 GMT, January 7th, where it moved to two minute intervals, the Twitter bot stopped posting tweets at 4.52 GMT on January 8th. The meaning of the tweets and the rest of the files left the solver stumped for several hours. A full feed of the tweets is available. After a day of fruitless searching, an IRC user did the impossible and solved the next puzzle. The user took the 761.mp3 file and zored it. There's another type of... Uh, uh, encryption, decryption type of uh, program. It was the file produced by the following instructions in the Twitter. The result was a JPEG file. It was possible to pre-construct the image resulting from the tweets. The JPEG file appears to be a rune table consisting of three columns named rune, letter, and value. And this is the image of it. Rune contains the actual rune character. Letter contains one or more plain text. And value contains a number. It is interesting to note that the numbers to be found in the value are all ascending primes. Building the sequence of the first 29 prime numbers, as a member of IRC pointed out, the runes stem from the Anglo-Saxon rune set, and the letters are in the order of the Anglo-Saxon runes. It was revealed that this is a fully blown gematria, which can be applied to different pieces of text to reveal interesting numbers. The instar emergence, for example, produced 761, which is the name of the file and the file's time signature reversed. It was soon discovered that this image, very like the first one, contained a hidden message, once again masked via outguess. The message can be found here. As in every message from Cicada, the content was followed by the PGP signature, which proved the authenticity of the message. 
After finally getting a message from 3301, the solvers found it was to quote IRC mostly blank. The message, it turned out, contained a mixture of tabs and spaces. The solvers converted this to binary and then ASCII and then found the next message. Come to and this address dot onion. We shall await you there. Good luck, 3301. The website can only be accessed through Tor, which is a hidden service. We went over that. Upon visiting the website, the solvers were presented with the following message. Note the formatting may be a little off on your screen. Press the control command, etc. The web browsers are useless here, and there's this image of the cicada. Welcome. The solvers soon found that web browsers were indeed useless and that we have to telnet into the website through the Tor network. Some solvers did so. Now, Telnet is uh, an app that is hacker hackers use that are notorious for using. Telnet, it's just a command line prompt where you can access anything that uh, has that port open and has the server set up. Some solvers did so, and they found that the website included an interactive shell. They could type in any number of it have it factorize, count to have it count up prime numbers, quit to quit, hello, pump out this interesting message, a mess, hello, a message for you, and all these numbers. It was soon discovered that these messages could be turned into ASCII, which created another message, again, GPG signed by 3301, the message read as follows, very good, you have done well to come this far, and another onion address. This led to a second onion address. Once the solvers had found the second onion, the next logical step was to visit it. They found the following. Patience is a virtue. Rummaging through the source code for this HTML file, they found the following. You can see it's commented there, so it's not visible, but it says, which means to come back soon. Soon afterwards, someone attempted to tell it to it, producing an error message, which contains the address of the VPS. That's a virtual private service the host uh, file that said uh, error promptly afterwards the site was taken down as the solvers patiently waited for more news about the second dot onion they co continued to explore other options they may have overlooked in the blind rush towards victory a new message was found by telling hint or clue and zoring the results uh, from the data folder in the CD image you can't see the forest when you're looking at the trees good luck 3301 and uh, here's the output. In Cicada OS, the solvers found two files named Wisdom and Folly. Now, there's a reference to Ecclesiastes in the Bible. Slash TMP. Here's the files, Wisdom and Folly. Wisdom is exactly the same as Folly, but it appears to represent no file type. The primes. Telling primes into the shell printed out a list of primes similar to the one on Cicada OS, but some primes were missing, have two extra spaces in front of them. There were extra spaces between 29 and 31 and 3257, 3259, and some missing primes between 71 and 1229. The missing primes are as follows. You can use a hosted Telnet service to access the website here. After the second Onion site finally reopened, the solvers got the following hint. You already have everything you need to continue. Sometimes one must knock on the sky and listen to the sound. Good luck. The hint told solvers that they needed to ping the website's IP and use and listen to the reply. Each ping reply was laced with data bytes, which could be combined to make the following. Well done. You have come far. And here's the next Onion address. Good luck, 3301. On the third onion page, the solvers received a message instructing them to stand by for coordinates. They prepared to visit addresses which would undoubtedly lead them to. Each poster had a phone number as well as an access code. Note that each phone number ends in 3301 or 1033. Calling the phone numbers gave automated speech, asking for a code to be typed into the dialers. Solvers soon realized that they had to convert the access code given in the poster to its gametrified format and type that. Upon doing so, the following message was given. It varied depending upon location. And these are, you can see, these are the image files of those cicadas and the phone number to call. Data set 13 offset and data. The data when Zord with the 560.13 from the data provided the user with a string of text, notably in this case, this onion address. It's important to note that each location gave a different onion address. 
All in all, six of the locations had their codes recovered while the seventh was not physically visited, but the phone number obtained by war dialing. Apparently, they dialed every number that ended in 1033. On each of these onion addresses, each solver was given an SSSS code, which stands for Shamer's Secret Sharing Scheme. A secret sharing scheme allows someone to share a secret with a certain number of people who each get their own string. Once enough of these secrets come together, they can be combined to create the final secret. Each location, its SSSS code, and some other data on each part is in the table below. And here's the table. We're going to wrap it up here and take it up in part four. You can see that we have Dallas, Okinawa, Moscow, Little Rock, Annapolis, Maryland, Portland, Oregon, and Columbus, Georgia. And we're going to get down to the final test where again as in cicada the first series in 2012 they break down the groups ultimately down to individuals and have an individual test and the individual test that we have here is unbelievable as far as the questions asked and the knowledge required as far as programming so we have a war going on here recruitment for someone we don't know who and this is a battle uh, because of the cryptographic disruption and uh, the privacy ascending between two individuals over the internet. Uh, there's a war on. We don't know if this is recruitment for those who are fighting against Big Brother or recruitment for those who are Big Brother or a series of Big Brothers. So we're going to finish up the rest of the Cicada story in part four and wrap it up and we'll talk to you next time.